So as I began my Paralympic journey and began swimming for physical therapy and, and rehabilitation, I, I just, I fluked up into the Paralympic Games. But the Paralympic Games, I'm going to share one story with you before I, I, I take my seat. When we change our perspectives, when we tolerate confusion, when we skin our knees and take risks, that, that will help our passions to come forward. And in changing our perspective, I had to have my perspective change because I was new to this whole world of disability. I was an athlete that was competing, trying to, to buy for a spot on the Olympic team. And now I'm in a gate waiting area, going to a test event in Atlanta, Georgia, with the basketball team, the track and field team, and the swim team, which I'm now a member of. I can't figure out how I got on the swim team. And as I'm sitting there, I'm looking around at my teammates and, and trying to see, you know, what was different? How, how am I part of this group, this new incredible group? And, you know, how, how many people fly in here, right? A few people. Right? Who, who boards the aircraft first? All y'all board the aircraft. <laughs> but I, I soon discovered, as the gate agent said, flight number 93 is getting ready to board for Atlanta, Georgia. Will everyone that needs a little bit more time and assistance please get up and board the aircraft at this time? So 70 of us and my teammates got up and began to walk out of the jet boards. I'm no dummy, I, I saw that as a perk. <laughs> so I went down to the 14th row, took my seat on the window, and I noticed one of my teammates boarding the aircraft is a bilateral amputee, kind of like Oscar. And the cool thing about being bilateral that I was soon to discover is that depending on which, which legs you take out of the closet in the morning time, you can be 6'8 or 4'3. So he had on his six, eight legs, and he gets on board the aircraft, stops at the seventh row, takes his seat, and he takes his artificial legs off and places them in the overhead cover above his head. But I get it, more leg room. So as, as the flight attendant says, uh, do you need more time, do you need more assistance, can I help you with anything else? He says, no, I'm, I'm just perfectly fine. So she goes off to get all the, the first class folks and the high mile flyers on board the aircraft, and as soon as she turns her back, his teammates quickly lift him up, now being 4-3, place him in the overhead fin <laughs> close the fin door. <laughs> now I'm on the edge of my seat trying to figure out what is going to happen next. And we have a lucky winner with a big old, one of those old cell phones with a long antenna back in the day. And he gets on and he has got this big rucksack that will not fit underneath the feet seat in front of him. And he's American, of course, Americans, you know. Uh, we have to have the space that is our own. We cannot go to the open bin over here, the open bin over there. We have to have the open bin that's right there over above our seat. So he goes, gets ready to lift that latch. And as he does, I'm going closer and closer. My 69 other teammates, hands folded like they've done this a thousand times before. And as the door springs open, boom, out the sky. He jumped just like you, sir. We went back to the 14th row where I was at. And I said, no, dude, your seat's up there with that guy. And as he goes back and collects his belongings all spread all over the, 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 the rows from 7 to 14, he gets back up, the guy's got his hand on his cheek, and he says, I'm sorry, sir, but this overhead bin space has been taken. <laughs> and I said, that's a brilliant attitude to have. And how, how, you know, stupid of me to think that people with disabilities were anything different than I was when I was trying to compete for those medals on the, on, the, on the Olympic team. So experience this, because Paralympians have the exact same dreams as Olympians. Oscar is incredible because he's congenital. He had that dream from birth. And how cool is it to, to go to the IAAF and have that dream realized in the Olympic Games? And when we take that and translate it over into the workforce, do we see people for truly who they are and what they bring to us instead of the limitations that we think that they have. So the next time we see somebody come into our HR department, whether they be a person of color, a woman, a person with a disability, sexual orientation, doesn't matter. What's on their resume is the most important thing. And can they get the job done? And can we train them to that ability for the values that are within inside the company? So I close with, with these words here. If we can, if we can, um, Walk with kings and keep our virtue. And talk with crowds and not lose the common touch. If neither foes and loving friends can hurt us, and if all men can count on you, but none too much. And if we can fill the unforgiving minute with just 60 seconds worth of a distance run, then yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a woman, my daughter. <laughs> or a man, my son, if by Richard Kipling. Thank you for your time.